The sympathetic nervous system is known as the fight, fright, or freeze. Like, so we're the tendency when we're anxious and scared is to run. And that was what an animal would do way back when. Like, that is kind of like, you know, an ancient response in our actually nervous system and brain. And it's still programmed in there. So, several of us. Our brains ter interpret that we are in danger and they want to, they're always in a state of anxiety. That's the extreme. And then what we have is the parasympathetic nervous system that can't, that's where we trigger our relaxation response. And there was a request for relaxation. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to sleep but the nervous system is calmed down into more of a steady state and can respond to uh, concerns that might cause anxiety in a way that is more of a coping, coping rather than a running. So a lot of times when we're anxious, we run or we freeze. We become like paralyzed. So in a parasympathetic nervous system, we would have more of the, what they would call the relaxation response, which is a term that uh, Herb Benson coined quite a while ago. Um, I think he was Harvard, I'm not positive, definitely East Coast, Ivy League. Um, anyway, it doesn't really matter. So now we have all this information about how yoga and breathing can trigger our relaxation or parasympathetic response. And that's one of the reasons we practice it. So let's get to the breath as I just talked your ear off about the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system. These are parts of our nervous system that we can, we can change our response with our breath alone. It is a tool that we have. So go ahead and breathe really fast. like. And notice how uncomfortable that is. And then don't do it very long, right? And then let's go to more of a calming breath. So one of the easier ones to relate to is a cadence type of breathing where we're breathing in and out, in and out through the nose because breathing in and out through the nose triggers the parasympathetic nervous system. Breathing out through the mouth is gonna trigger the sympathetic nervous system in most cases. So if you go like this, that's hyperventilating, right? And you're barely taking in any breath in. So that is going to be the sympathetic nervous system. Now let's go for cadence breathing where you're breathing in for about three, four, five counts and you're breathing out for three, four, five counts. And that's in and out through your nose breathing in and out through your nose. So take a breath in and a breath out through your nose, breathing in and breathing out. Soft breath in and soft breath out. Now start to count with this, inhaling, and we're gonna do it with, let's do it with our fingers. So we've got, some counting going here. So you're going to go pointer finger, thumb, middle finger, thumb, ring finger, thumb, pinky thumb as we do this inhale. So inhaling and then exhaling. Just a way to, you don't have to use your fingers. You could just tap down, inhaling, exhaling. The reason I said continue to do that the reason I said that is because some of us are going to be comfortable three counts, some four, some five, and I can count to five, one, two, three, four, five, or I can count one, two, three, four, five. The cadence breathing is a wonderful way to find a balanced breath. And let's turn this into the box breath. So we're going to inhale in for four, hold for four, 
Exhale out for four and hold for four. So here we go, I'll count it. Inhaling one, two, three, four. Holding one, two, three, four. Exhaling one, two, three, four. Holding one, two, three, four. You can always switch this to five or six or three. One's not better than the other. Inhaling one, two, three, four. Holding one, two, three, four. Exhaling one, two, three, four. Holding one, two, three, four. Two more times. Inhaling one, two, three, four. Holding one, two, three, four. Exhaling one, two, three, four. Holding one, two, three, four. Notice how you're feeling. Inhaling one, two, three, four. Holding one, two, three, four. Exhaling one, two, three, four. Holding one, two, three, four. So your homework this weekend is to practice a variation of this breath. You can always eliminate the holding if you notice that your sympathetic system or a fight or flight is starting to come on from holding the breath, get rid of it and just do the cadence. You can always change to adapt for your needs. So we're gonna try to use this breath now not the, not the cadence breathing, but, or not the box breathing, but the cadence. So let's take our arms out to, down behind, out and along your side and spread your fingers and turn the palms forward and the thumbs outward. Good, now make a fist. Let's inhale, one, two, three, four. Now exhaling out, one, two, three, four. Good, open up your hands. Inhaling, one, two, three, four. And exhaling, one, two, three, four. You guys got this. Arms forward, inhaling, one, two, three, four. Exhaling, circling outward, one, two, three, four. Lowering down, one, two, three, four. Inhaling is usually upward movement. So inhaling, one, two, three, four. Exhaling is usually downward movements. Exhaling, one, two, three, four. Wonderful. Turn your palms back forward. This time, place your thumbs on the insides of your palms, wrap your fingers around, and we're just gonna do the right side. I want you to feel the muscles activate. Pretend like you're gonna push into something, like a wall next to you. So press in as you make your fist out to the side. I want you to notice the muscles activating. Beautiful. Exhale, lower the arm down. You can count to three or four when we do this, or just inhale and exhale and don't worry about the counting. Let's do that again. Inhaling is the arm lifts. Feel the muscle activate. I'm feeling these muscles back behind near my shoulder blade, and then exhale, lower down. Now, release that fist and lift the arm up. Notice what you feel behind there. May not be quite as intense. And exhale and lower it down. Let's do the other side. Make a fist, thumb on the inside, wrap your fingers around. So we are contracting here and we're contracting muscles in the shoulder and in the arm. Let's pretend we're pushing into something as we press out on the inhale and exhale, lower it back down. Notice what you're feeling. Do that again. Inhaling, arm out to the side. 
And then exhaling, lowering down. Open up the fingers. Inhaling, spreading fingers. And exhaling, lowering on down. Good. Interlace your fingers. Press your palms forward. Good. Relax your shoulders on your back. Take a breath in and a breath out. Let's press our palms into our thighs, round our spine. Find cat pose. Cat pose, chin is to chest, leaning back, feeling the back of the body widen. Now we're going to inhale, push the palms away, lift our heart. Palms start to lift, not necessarily up here, just a little bit forward and upwards. And then exhale, round, cat pose. Rounding, shoulders rounding forward, belly pulling in on the exhale. Inhale, push the palms away, lifting, arms forward, pressing. Feeling interlaced fingers. Pull them apart as you bend your elbows in towards you. Yes, so this is an isometric. We're pushing the webbings of the fingers together, and at the same time, we're pulling them apart. Feel that, press away, push in. One more time, press away, push in, shake it out. Let's start to circle the right arm towards the left, bending the elbow, open it up. Some nice fluid movements. We just did some contractions, now we got to add in some fluid movements. The contractions might feel more active, right? They do feel more active. It's more of the yang. Although this is movement, it's still a yang practice, but it feels a little bit more relaxed. Yes, the movements can get bigger and bigger. So we're lifting and pulling back and taking it to the corner up around and back, and a few more. Diagonal, up, around, and back. Let's go for the other side. So arm goes kitty corner to the right, bending the elbow. You may not get as much movement. That is okay. You can use your right hand on your thigh for support as you lean forward so that you're not dropping forward. So there's a reaching, but there's also a bending. We wouldn't want to reach too far at first. We're just warming up the body for our practice. One more. And let's take both arms now. So let them be limp. That, feel what that's like. Now circle them around with more activity and vigor. And notice how... So when the palms are forward, the shoulders are going forward. When the hands are like this, then we open them out wide. That's more of an external rotation and the shoulder blades come on to the back. Good, and you can use your gaze and follow one of your arms. It's hard to follow both. You could kind of switch it up, follow one and then the other. You can always alternate and not do both arms at the same time. So this practice becomes your own. I'm just the guide or the facilitator. All right, and then release it down. Let's take our right knee in towards us, give it a big hug in, big hug in, and now we're gonna circle it around and about, around and about. So there's a few different muscles, well, lots of different muscles inside of us that respond to the parasympathetic, the relaxation response. And one of them is the psoas. So we're gonna work the psoas a little bit, which is in our hip flexor by loosening up the joint. That's a first step. So circling it around and about, and then pull the knee in towards you. And then you're gonna exhale and let it go gently, but so there's an impact on your foot, right? So let it go, that's it. And then inhale, lift it back up. So here's our activity, right? We're, there's a little bit of contraction. We're holding the weight of the leg up. We let it go. 
that's more of a release and a letting go, which is associated with the parasympathetic relaxation response. Pull the knee in. We lift up. Feel that inner body lift through your body. Inner body lift through your body. You got that? <laughs> and lower it down. Other side. Lifting the left knee in and up towards you. In and up. And then we're gonna go ahead and circle it around and about. See if you can imagine this crevice, this, if you will, it's the joint, it's the bone moving in the joint. And we're all gonna have a different size circle based on the size of our joint. So some people do have tighter hips and not quite as much mobility within that joint. And others have a nice big wide, Joint, is one better than the other? Not necessarily, but it will change our movements. Come back to center, lift up, exhale, let it go. Now you determine how fast or with how much force you let it go. You don't wanna hurt your ankle or your foot and let it go. So the inhale is an upward movement and the exhale is a downward movement. Good, one more. And you've got it. So now we're gonna play with some isometrics. First, take your right knee out to the side. And many of us have a tendency to have our weight in the insides of the foot or the outside of the foot. And when that happens, look what happens. Go ahead and let your knees, your weight go to the inside of your feet and the knees cave in. So that's what happens, right? So the knees are not in alignment with the foot. Now go ahead and take your weight to the outside of the foot and notice the knees going outward. Do that a few times, in and out and out and in and roll through your foot and feel this rolling inward and outward and outward and inward. So rolling in, rolling out. Now we are intentionally doing this movement. We are intentionally doing this movement. Come back to neutral where we're pushing down through both feet, pulling our belly in and up. Bring your forearm to the thigh. Let's get a little, let's get a little side bend in here. So lifting your left arm towards your arm dome, you might circle it around and about or lift the arm into a cactus. And then we're going to, or lengthen the arm. So what's your body ready for right now? You might extend the arm out towards the right. Now at the same time, bring your mind's eye or your awareness to your feet. Push them down evenly. Go ahead consciously and bring the weight to the inside of the foot and then the outside of the foot and back to center and notice how that feels. Breathe in and breathe out. Push down through your feet, rise up. Awesome. Take your right hand outside your left thigh if it reaches. If it doesn't reach, you can just touch it to your waist. Left hand behind you, find our first twist. Shoulder moves up and back as we find our twist gazing towards the shoulder without torquing the neck. So finding the range of motion that's just right for you and your twist. Breathe in and breathe out. Now, if we stay here for a few breaths, you might feel a little bit more relaxed. So breathe in and breathe out. One more, breath is in, breath is out. Before you turn, notice if this sideways knee, the one going towards the right is turning in a bit and press it outwards. In fact, use your hand on the inside of the thigh, give it a little pressure so that it aligns back up. Your kneecap is aligning with your middle toes. Now, pushing the hand into the thigh, feel that pressure. And that is an isometric your inner thigh is probably working at this moment. You can somewhat feel it turn on. You might feel it more than somewhat. 
Then take your hand to the outside of the thigh. Now push the outside of the thigh into the hand and notice how that feels. So now you may feel the outside of the thigh turning on. Bring the hand back to the inside of the thigh and push into it. Beautiful, one more time. I'm starting to feel heat in my body. Maybe you are too. Good. Now with our, we can release that with our torso in the middle of our thighs. Let's make sure your buttocks is on the chair. You can take, walk your sit bones back a little bit and then we're gonna lean forward. Palms on thighs, shoulders up and back, leaning forward. Feel the weight in your feet, try to keep it centered rather than rolling in or out. Breathe in, breathe out. Draw your shoulders up and back a few times. You can feel the shoulder blades move onto your back. Then press down through your feet and your hands. Rise up. You got this. Let's bring that right knee forward. Okay, other side. Turning the left knee out to the side and right knee is forward. Take a breath in and a breath out. Roll your knees, let them come into center. And then cross your arms over and then reverse it. Cross your arms over. So in, out, in, out, in, out. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, back to neutral. Pressing now the Oh, actually, no, we got to do the forearm on the thigh and then feel the side of your body. So it's really nice to kind of take your hand up the rib cage. You can stay here. You might go to cactus. Feel your shoulder blade on your back. Lean slightly back. Attune to the bottom shoulder. Make sure it's pressing back. Maybe straighten the arm over the ear. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breath is in. And breath is out. Push down to your feet, rise up. Excellent. Release down. Now, left hand, back a hand, press it into the inner left thigh. Push those two into each other. Hand into thigh, thigh into hand. Feel that pressure as you push. So your arm is in your shoulder is externally rotated. So you can feel your shoulder blade on your back at the same time that you are activating your inner thigh. Now, go ahead and do it the other way. Push your palm into the outer thigh. Feel that, that's your strength, right? You're feeling that thigh press into your hand and hand into your thigh. These are isometrics. Go back to the front, push it. Go back to the back, push it. We want, we want both inside and outside to be strong. Very often, one is tighter and one is stronger. One is more flexible than the other. Lean forward, push your hands into your thighs. Buttocks moves back. Draw the shoulders up and back a few times. Now, if it feels safe to you, lean a little bit more forward and bring your hands down your legs. Stop when you feel like it's too much. Keep drawing your sit bones back and down. You might dangle your hands in the middle here and let them sway. You might draw figure eights. Some of you, your fingertips may be touching down and if they are, great. Some of you might have a block near you and push your hands into a block. Gives you a little bit of height there. And so we're getting a forward fold in. Breathe in and breathe out. All the while conscious of pressing down through our feet. We're gonna push down, rise up. You got it. And bring the leg forward. So now we're gonna do a little bit different but similar to what we just did. You're gonna inhale right knee up. Now. Take it out. You're going to take your hand to the inside of the thigh and push against it as you take the thigh outward. The leg may or may not lift real high. Don't worry about that. Go ahead, bring it back in. 
open it up. We're pushing hand in the thigh, thigh in the hand. Maybe you take your arm out to the side. Lift tall, spread your fingers. Good, press back in, release it down. Other side, I mean, now we're gonna push the hand into the outside. Inhale, lift the knee, pushing hand into the thigh, thigh into hand. Open that knee up. Notice maybe it doesn't open quite as much. Bring it back in. Let's extend the leg straight down and forward. And then take your hands to your hips. Lean forward, pull the elbows in towards each other. Press down through the heel, pull the toes towards you. Breathing in and breathing out. Press down through your heel and your foot, rise up, arms may lift skyward, relaxing the shoulders down. Awesome. Take your hands in front of you, elbows bending out to the side. Twist towards your left. Inhale to center. Twist towards your left again. Inhale to center. Come back to center. Twist one more time. Breath in, breath out. Inhale to center. Take your hands behind you to the seat of the chair or the back of the chair for a little back bend. You can keep the leg extended or bring the foot back in for this. Either is fine. Shoulder up and back. Shoulders up and back. Lift them towards your ears and back. Lift your heart skyward. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. Drag the heel back in. Drag the heel back in towards you. You got it. Other side. Inhale, lifting the left knee. Good. Open it out to the side, pushing your hand into your inner thigh. This is hard. It's not necessarily easy. It's a little awkward, so just feel it. Take your hand to the outside. Press it back in. Push it back out into your hand. That's good. Now take your hand on the inside and push it back forward. Yeah. You guys got this. One more time. Take it out. Maybe take the right arm out to the side. Kind of a version of spinal balance. Breathe in and breathe out. Back to center, extending the leg. Good. Push your heel downward and pull it towards you. Notice the stretch. Hands at your hips. A little bit, we're leaning a little bit forward for a forward fold here, but not all the way. Elbows pulling towards each other. Breath is in, breath is out. Feel your neck and your head as an extension of your spine. Press down through the heel and the foot, rise up, arms lift up. Yes, you guys love, you love that movement, right? Now, exhale, bend your elbows out to the side. Let's find our twist towards the right. Inhale the center. And again, towards the right. Breathe in and breathe out. Back to center. One more time. Inwards with the breath through the nose, exhaling out through the nose. To center we go. Hands to the back of the chair. Somewhere, it could be the seat of the chair or towards the back. Find the place where you can find the best back bend for you. Back bends are so important. Draw the shoulders up and back, lifting the heart skyward. You can, if you want, keep your hands here on the side of the chair, the seat of the chair, or maybe you take your arms like they're in a, you're in, what is this? This is kind of like, um, you know, oh, I'm losing the word Titanic, the um, thing at the edge of the boat, the front of the boat, like we're just opening up, feeling the breeze, feeling the breeze, and then bring it back to center. Take your legs wide. Let's do a little bit of free flow. So arms lifting, exhaling towards the left, lowering down and up towards the right. Good, go one more time towards the left. Feel your feet push down as your arms 
lower, then they move to the side, fluidly coming up. See, these are fluid movements with your breath. Let's go the other way, circling the other way towards the right and down. Make sure you push down through your feet as you lower down. That's it. Exhaling down, inhaling up. One more big circle around the universe. Arms reach up, exhaling, hands at your heart. Bring your knees together and let's find our way down on the mat for the next part of our class. So Fridays are mat days, right? So you might want to do a wall dog on your way down, stretching the back of the legs out. You want to make sure that your props are to the side, but not in your way so that you can lower down and um, with a free space there, clear space. You might put a chair against the wall to help you go down. You might have a blanket underneath your knees. Hands on the seat of the chair, and you can do a wall dog on your way down. You might take your hands to the seat of the chair or the back of the chair and press your hips back. Just a way to go downward and keep stretching out, making space in the body, bending the knees, and straightening the knees, bending and straightening. And then holding the seat of the chair, slowly lower down. And then we'll move the chair out of the way, out of the way. And you can place the blanket so that your knees can go on it, especially if you have sensitive knees or your floor is really hard. If you've got a good cushion, you might not need it. And we'll come into hands and knees. So when you get into hands and knees, taking your time, taking your time to get there, safety is the most important aspect of the class. For many people, going down to the earth is scary and that triggers the paris the the sympathetic nervous system that's the fight or flight so they say i'm not going down and that that is information and communication from your body and your nervous system if you know that it's not safe for you you should not go down if you are questioning your safety you definitely don't want to go down you want to feel like it's safe for you to get up and down from the earth and that there's help around for you if necessary. So palms are spreading, fingers are spreading, pressing down into the mat, about shoulder distance apart, maybe a little wider. And then feet are under, or knees are underneath hips. Let's exhale and round the spine, shin to chest, belly pulls in. And then inhale, melt the heart, lifting the heart, sit bones rise. Exhale, round, claw the mat, pull your belly in and up. Inhale, reverse it. Lift your heart. Exhale, round. Inhale, lift the heart. Shoulder blades on the back. Breathe in. And breathe out. Breath is in. And breath is out. Good. Let's rock the weight forward and back. Now, if your shoulders are sore, come onto your forearms. Forearms are perfectly fine. One is not better than the other. They're actually working different parts of the body in terms of weight bearing and muscles. You just want your elbows under your shoulders when you start the pose. So it looks like this, elbows under shoulders. Shoulders are slightly back behind actually. That would be the best spot, leaning forward and back. Let's find a crescent shaped child pose. So we're going to start in child pose and there's variations. It's going to depend on your shoulders. 
So, and your hips. So the toes together and the knees apart is a choice. If you wanna bring the knees together, you can. If you take the knees apart, it's a little bit more of a hip opener. We rock the hips forward and back just to ease in. Now, many people are like, I can't get my hips back to my heels and that's just fine. You go wherever you can, somewhere between hips over knees and hips towards heels. Then you may take your head down and rest it on a block. That's a possibility. You, let your, you can let your head just relax down on the earth. You might bend your elbows and that might feel better for your shoulders. Now, for some people, this pose triggers the parasympathetic nervous system because it's relaxing. For others, it's like, no, thank you. This is just not comfortable. So again, we make our choices and listen to your body. Let's take the arms towards the right. We're gonna walk them towards the right in a crescent shape. So the hips are moving towards the left as we move the arms towards the right. And feel the stretch. You might still keep Keep your elbows bent or you might lengthen them, pulling the left hip back. Take a breath in and a breath out. Notice where you're feeling the stretch along the left side of the body as you move your body in a C shape or a crescent shape towards the right. Take a breath in, expanding the rib cage side to side front to back, exhale out through the nose. Inhale, arms move forward. Let's take the arms towards the left. Walk the arms towards the left. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. Breathe in and breathe out. Arms are moving towards the left. Elbows may be bent. Hips are moving towards the right. Notice if this is relaxing for you. Notice if it's not. Let's inhale, come to center, center yourself on the mat, and let's come into Sphinx Pose. So Sphinx Pose, we're gonna go onto our bellies. You wanna make sure that your lower back is okay. And I, I usually say this to you guys, you might want the, the blanket underneath like your rib cage and your pelvis area. That can be a cushion for it. Um, you might need more of a cushion if your body doesn't like the hard floor. So we need to adapt. You can put a blanket over the whole mat. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna move it out to the side so you can see with more clarity, but um, know that you can have a blanket under there to help your lower back. If you have terrible lower back pain, you may not want to do this. Of course, you always wanna protect yourself. We're gonna come on to our elbows and the belly is into the mat and then take the block and just bring it in between your palms with your thumbs up. And so notice how the elbows are about underneath the shoulders, maybe slightly forward. And then let your hips sway to the right and then to the left. Little belly massage, swaying, swaying right and swaying left. And then come back to center and feel your toes extending back behind you. Maybe press the tops of the toe nails down into the mat, spread your toes. Press your hands into the block, push your forearms down, lift your heart and telescope it forward. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. Breathe in, pushing palms in, and pushing palms. As you push your palms into the mat, feel your shoulder blades, feel the muscles activating on your arms. 
release that. You can take the black and move it over. And then keeping on your forearms, we're gonna slowly lower down a little bit and then lift up. Lower down and then lift up. You're pushing your paw. Now push your forearms down into the mat, pull your elbows towards you. Breath is in and breath is out. If you're feeling lower back pain, you need to lower on down and maybe sway the hips right and left. In fact, everyone can take a little break here. Then we're gonna take our hands out to the sides, hands by your sides. And then we're gonna push the palms down, claw the mat, inhale, lift the shoulders up and back. Exhale, lower down. Keep the shoulder blades on the back. Press down, heart rises. Push down, heart lowers. So this is an isometric. Push down into the earth. Shoulders move up and back. So you feel your shoulder blades move towards each other. Exhaling, lowering down. Breathe in. Maybe hold here for a breath or two and then exhale and lower down. Walk your arms forward, straight forward. If it's too much, keep your elbows bent a little bit. They don't have to be all the way straight. Karate chop the earth with the pinky sides of your arms, lifting the right leg, the left arm. A little bit of a back bend. If it's feeling like your back is hurting, lower down a little bit. Lower down. Maybe you only lift the leg and not the arm, or you lift the arm and not the leg. Stretch long. Push down through the right pinky side of your hand as you lift the left arm up. Thumb is up. Exhale, lower down. Let the head release. Take a breath in and a breath out. Back to karate chopping the earth, inhaling left leg lift and maybe right arm. So we're in a dyad. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. This is a little bit of a back bend, right? So just notice how it feels in your body. Lower the arm and the leg down now we're gonna lift arms and legs. You can keep your arms straight. You can take your arms out to the side like they're in cactus or goalposts. This is very nice too. Maybe you lift your legs and push them into each other. Lift your arms, draw the shoulders up and back. Feel the neck, it's long, right? No crunching the head back or forward. Toning the hips. Exhale, lower the arms and the legs down. Breathe in, breathe out. Let's inhale and lift one more time. Inhaling arms into cactus, shoulder blades on the back, legs pressing in towards each other, hips toning. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in and breathing out. Take your palms down, press on up, press on up. So, Back bends are active poses. They, and then forward folds are more relaxing or trigger the parasympathetic nervous system, which we're gonna get to. But first let's do a little bit more work. I was just reading something about plank and you know having the nerve to keep your knees down in plank. So you can, again, do this on your palms or on your forearms. The knees are down for plank here. You're either gonna push your forearms down into the mat. You can always have that block. If you like the block, you can press your palms into the block and push the sides of your arm bones down. You're in plank. You can walk your knees back until you feel your belly activate. You're pressing your belly up into your spine. We don't want this going on where the belly drops down. We're pulling the belly in and up. Your other choice is to come up onto your hands like so, or maybe you're gonna try both. 
So arms are straight, belly pulls in, you're in plank. Some of you might say, oh, I wanna lift my knees, and you can for knees up plank, but it doesn't make it better. Knees down, you might be able to bring your shoulder blades more on your back. Now we're gonna do a push up or two. So you're gonna exhale, bend your elbows towards your side, keeping shoulder blades on the back, only lower an inch or two down, push down, rise up. Let's do that again. Exhale, lowering down just a little bit. Elbows skim the sides of your body. You're looking forward and down. Push down through your arms, rise up. Now take your hips back. And take your hips back. They're moving towards your heels, but not quite. Your toes may be curled under. Then inhale forward. Let's do another push up. We're forward. Our belly pulls in. Lower, just a few inches down, elbows bending, push down through your palms, lift up, exhale, hips back. That's more our active poses. Now we're gonna come on to our back and do a bridge pose. I want you to feel how it is to do a bridge pose. A bridge pose is generally, well, it is a back bend, and it might trigger the parasympathetic nervous system or more of an active system. We're not looking to do the sympathetic nervous system, but we can take an active bridge. Our feet are outside our hips. Our arms are down by our side. We push down through our feet. We lift our hips up. We can walk our shoulders in towards each other. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. Feet are pressing down, heels are pulling towards us. We can turn this into more of a relaxation pose by placing a block underneath our hips. So let's say you feel this weekend like you want more relaxation. You might take a blanket pillow or a yoga, soft yoga block underneath your hips. You wanna get it just right so it's not cutting your back. And you can relax here and breathe in, do some of that cadence breathing. So let's breathe in for, and even if you don't have the block, you can still hold bridge for a cadence breath or two. We're gonna breathe in for four, three, two, one. Notice how we really expand the heart here and then exhaling out, four, three, two, one. Inhaling in, two, three, four, Exhaling out, two, three, four. Staying here for a while is gonna help you relax, but open up your chest. So one more time, breathing in for four, and breathing out for four. I highly encourage you over your July 4th weekend to practice that. Now, we're going to do number four pose because this whole celebration is about Independence Day on the fourth. So bring your right knee in towards you. And then you're gonna take the right ankle over the left thigh, right ankle over left thigh. Then you're gonna use your right hand to gently press the right thigh away. Feel your hips, they should be about level. We don't want one dipping too much lower than the other. You might feel an opening here in the hip, meaning you might feel a stretch on the outside of the right hip or inner thigh. I do not, many people do not, some do. We're gonna move now both knees towards us until we feel a stretch and then stop. So you still want your right knee moving outward. You can use your right hand to press the thigh away. You wanna be gentle. You might weave your hands inside the triangle and around it to feel the stretch in the right hip. You can always pull the legs in towards you more or press them away based upon the sensation. You wanna get it just right, not too much, but you still wanna feel a stretch. Once you find it, stay there and breathe and soften and feel it. Feel the opening. This is number four on the right side. 
You're creating independence and freedom in your hips, in your body. Over time, you might be able to pull the leg in a little bit more, or you might notice that it got more intense and you need to let go. Let's lower the hips down, give it a little break. In fact, let your hips sway to the right and sway, I mean, your knees sway to the right and then sway to the left. And just let them fall to the right and fall to the left. Come back to center. Let's do number four on the left side. Pull the left knee in towards you. Give it a hug. And place the ankle on the right thigh. Feel the pose here with level hips and hand gently pressing into the thigh. We don't push knee joints around. And we're going to pull the knees in towards us until you feel a good stretch. Feel a good stretch here. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathing in and breathing out. Breathing in and breathing out. You might weave your hands in between your thighs as you pull the knee in. Find the stretch. The left side can be very different than the right. Think about freedom in your hips as you gently find the stretch. Full breath. Inward, expansive, exhale, releasing. Let it go. Let that go. Now, I want you to feel the effect of a forward fold, but first let's do the tie stretch while we're on our back. And that'll stretch the back of our legs. So tie around right foot and then press the right foot skyward. Now you can also, if you don't have a tie, interlace your fingers behind the right thigh as the heel pushes away and upwards. You can spread your toes. And then you can, if you have the tie, take your hands to the tie without clenching, right? We don't wanna clench, just holding. Relax the shoulders down as you find your stretch. You may bend and straighten your leg a few times. The leg may not fully straighten, but you're getting a stretch and that's what's important. Let's take the leg out to the side for a few breaths, keeping the left hip down. Breathe in and breathe out. Breathe it in and breathe it out. Breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, leg rises up. Release the tie and lower the leg down. Other side, I'm just gonna turn here. You put the tie around your left foot or interlace your fingers behind the left thigh. If your hands are interlaced behind your thigh or you're pushing into your thigh with your hands or fingers, then go ahead and push the thigh into them and then the fingers into the thigh. That's your isometric. Feel the stretch behind your leg. Moving towards straightening the knee, but perhaps not straightening it fully. If you don't feel the stretch, you can always straighten the bottom leg. We're gonna take the left leg out to the side, support it with your hand or the strap, so your right hip is staying down. Breathe in and breathe out. Breath is in and breath is out. Breathing in and breathing out. Bring the leg back upwards. 
and exhale, lower the leg down. Take a big stretch, arms up overhead, reach through your toes. Reach through your toes. So I'm gonna show you turtle pose and or a forward fold that is considered poses that are relaxation, more yin to relax the nervous system. Or you can relax on your back for Shavasana with your legs up on a chair. And I wanna show you turtle because we haven't done turtle in a while. So for turtle, you might be up on a blanket, um, which can be helpful for any type of forward fold. So the knees don't, so the knees round, uh, we want the knees out to the side. We don't want the back rounding too much. So now your hands can be on your ankles or your shins as you lean forward. I'm just gonna show this with this block too, because it can be nice. But so this is more of a relaxation pose for many, but you might be feeling a big opening here. Now you can put blankets or blocks or props underneath to relax your knees. You also can rest your head on a block like this. It's gonna depend on your body. You might just be here for a little bit, a little bit. And this is more of one of these poses because it's a forward fold, the torso is moving towards the legs, it's relaxation or a parasympathetic pose. You also might take the choice of lengthening your legs, letting your legs flop open to the sides and maybe just something like this, where you're relaxing and letting your body hang like a rag doll for a little bit. Um, some people take a bolster on top of their lap to relax. I'm just going to show you that. You could use a, pillows at home. So something like this, where the bolster's on top of you and you just kind of relax down on it. That's a possibility. You might stack a blanket on top of here as well. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna take it out from here, even though you should probably have it. So relaxation poses usually require lots of props, so you can be really comfortable. So be prepared for setup time, but something like this, and you can turn your head one way. And then it, you'd wanna spend the same amount of time on the opposite side. So this feels very comfortable for me, and you might think it does for you, and if it doesn't for you, that's okay too. Then you would get out of that pose and do another pose. So the big, most important relaxation pose is Shavasana, the relaxation pose on your back. You can do it in bed, but you want your body neutral. You might have a little blanket underneath your head. You might place a bolster underneath your knees for your back, and then you relax down. You also can have your feet up on a chair. That is so lovely. I That might be homework for you guys, you know? So something like this, hands on belly to feel your breath or arms down by your side to really feel your shoulder blades go onto the back. And then once you're there, this is the relaxation. This is where the breath releases. We're not controlling it. We're no longer practicing cadence breath, but we are practicing belly breath. So there's gonna be a little rise of the belly on the inhale and a lowering back down of the belly on the exhale. Breathing in softly, breathing out softly. Breathing in and breathing out. Body scans are a wonderful practice to help get in touch with your body, to stay in your body, to relax your body. So you might scan your body from the bottom of your legs and feet up to the top of your head. 
So relaxing the legs and the feet as they flap open. You might feel your knees against a bolster or on the earth. Whatever pose you chose for your relaxation pose. Relaxing the upper thighs and hips. Relaxing the torso. Lower spine. Middle spine. The upper spine. And the neck. Tracing your focus to your shoulder blades, the soft breath, your upper arms, elbows, lower arms, hands and fingers. Spine's eye to the jaw, upper and lower jaw. Tongue. Eyes. Forehead. And scalp. Whole body relaxing. Just as you are. No need to go anywhere or to do anything, to just be feeling the energy running through the body from your more active practice. You can feel the effects of it in your body. As you breathe with stillness. So you may remain in stillness in your relaxation pose for as long as you wish. It is your holiday weekend, your July 4th freedom, Independence Day. I encourage you to find spaces in your day for relaxation, to practice your breathing, experience your relaxation response, your parasympathetic nervous system. Thank you for mentioning that at the beginning of class. Wishing you the very best on this Friday, first Friday in July. Namaste, everyone. I'm here for any questions, any comments. There's so much to say about the parasympathetic nervous system. We'll have to do a class on the vagus nerve. <laughs>